This is Dave Meltzer here with Entrepreneurs the Playbook, and we have him back at the win in the lobby of the win here at Blue Wire Studios, the incredible David Tyree, Super Bowl champion, known for many different things, including the incredible upset victory for the New York Giants, which I still think is incredible. David, welcome to the playbook. Man, from one David to another, man. I really appreciate the uh, invite, and thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Well, we have a lot in common beyond our name, and I'm going to start with health. Different than the second topic, which I'll get to, but uh, most people may or may not know this about me, but I played college football. And, oh, snap. And, and I talk about being and enjoying the consistent, everyday, persistent, without quit pursuit of my potential. Mm. And you're born with an energetic and genetic inheritance that, uh, as my friend Mike Tannum always says, right, your skills and knowledge, David, will be your basement, but your desire determines your potential. Uh, but we're born with skills, uh, we're born with the inheritance, and the closest I've come to my potential is to be an average college football player. <laughs> that, that was beyond, I w I'm not lying, in, my, yeah, yeah, in yeah. My, my family, I could graduate, as some of my brothers, by the way, did. I grew up with six. They, nice. um, summa cum laude from Harvard, less people in my family would be impressed than the fact that I actually even made a college football team. When I, you sit there and all these guys, I went to Harvard, Penn, Columbia, and I'm like, I played college football. Everybody's like, in my family, oh my God. That was it, that right? was everything. And that's proof to me that the work ethic and endurance, the consistent, persistent behavior allowed me to live to my potential, even though everybody has different potentials with different things. Yes. And when I learned to put that into things that I was born to do, mm -hmm. that my skills, and knowledge and desire we're, we're capable of all of a sudden you know for example making money which is a good mm. thing by the way absolutely it lasts a lot longer than playing football uh, <laughs> I, I tell people all the time i'm glad i'm good at this this yes. is a good thing <laughs> Fantastic uh, really work but you when i look at your career from syracuse on you weren't just born with great gifts because a lot of people i ran lee steinberg the sports agency i Thank know, you. a lot of talented guys yeah you get the good you get some cream over there yeah <laughs> lee, right? absolutely but you were a guy who i see as an icon for consistent persistent pursuit what and how did you learn about a certain endurance and work ethic that made you and put you in a position to win and to be a great player yeah that's a fantastic question i think from the moment i got engaged with athletics I was, you know, moved into an amazing community in New Jersey, Montclair, New Jersey. And I would say it's definitely the gold standard in relation to public, public school football um, in New Jersey. Amazing history. And, and being in that town, especially when I was there, the diversity, um, and I wasn't anything special. I, I, I was, came from East Orange and a lot more gritty, a lot more, um, you know, urban. And I, I realized that from a social perspective, there were opportunities there that I didn't see previously. So that was the, even as a young man, I realized it, but it was, sports was social. And because there were so many kids way ahead of the curve, I had to grind my way in. And, and there were so many people in that town that were better than me. And I, and I acknowledge them and I, and I love where I, that part of my story, but that was the blueprint for it. And even being a, you know, a, a division one athlete, I, I had a teammate who was recruited heavier than me. So right. I was never the guy, even though I was talented and I understood that I can create opportunity. And I think the awareness, the self-awareness is something I just big on, I love talking about, that it was just acknowledging that, but also recognizing my potential, my desire, and having the, 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 the goals to see those things come to fruition as an athlete. And that part, and being adaptable, is really what I think created greater opportunities and allowed my name to, you know, you know, just continue to create a, a legacy behind my, my experiences. And you had a huge career and you made huge plays, but probably one of the biggest plays, you know, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Immaculate Reception. And, yeah. You know, there's very few catches that people know as well as that one. And Franco's a good friend of mine awesome. as well. But, you know, I believe the people that have these coincidences occur. There you go. The big plays. <laughs> uh, they're people who I look and know the mathematical equation of luck, I call it. Yeah, what you pay attention to, and then give all five levels of intention, which I see in your career. You, you did what you were supposed to do every day. You said what you were supposed to say. Mm -hmm. You thought what you were supposed to think. You believed what you were supposed to believe, and that's not easy when everybody, you know, is telling you you can't do it, don't do it. A lot of outside noise, absolutely. Yeah. 
And then that intuition, the intellect, and the inspiration that comes from the four levels of intention to allow us to feel it. Yeah. And if you truly are inspired, when it's the biggest moments of your life, things ha coincidence happens. So the math that I've learned is attention plus intention equals coincidence. And I will tell you, the team that you beat in the Super Bowl, uh, I've been a student of football for a long time. I've mm -hmm. been around it. Warren Moon was my business partner in yeah. Sports One Marketing for 12 years. So I've been around the greatest. Aikman, Moon, Young. You sure pretty have. Pretty good ones. Uh, I find that, though, that it's amazing how, you know, the greatest team maybe ever formed with the greatest coach that may have ever coached, you know, somehow gets beat <laughs> by what everyone else thought was less than. Yeah. And that belief and that feeling, I could feel myself and there was something special about that one coincidence. Mm -hmm. And in your mind, you know, what was it that created this, you know, coincidence that allowed you to create historically a great legacy? Yeah, I like your, I like your equation. You know, I think the equals part of the equation for me is I'm, I kind of welcome promise and providence. I think there's certain experiences that people will have. And obviously, as you acknowledge, on different scales, right? Everybody's promise or moment of providence, things that are just far beyond their control, ability, power, that, you know, I don't, I don't choose luck or coincidence as words just because it can have a min it, it can minimize something that was really appointed to be. And I think that's something that, that's really important to me. Um, you know, just people, I, I'm, I'm not shy about my faith in a, it's just like, hey man, this is just me. Hubert Davis had some words on his, on his road to Final Four. It's like, hey man, you get me, you get a little faith, you get a little Jesus, all that stuff. And that was the, my little simple equation is that pain and perseverance will lead to promise or providence. You know, life's obstacles are shaping us and the decisions that we make are continuous to shape us and our willingness, right? The, the human experience has the resolve to, to, to get to the end. Everybody wants to, to win, to end well, to have success. And that cultivates the perseverance. And I think it's moments like that that deliver us to those promises. And I think by God's own choosing, I had a, <laughs> had a moment of providence that I never could have dreamed or imagined. It's so important that you say that because I went in later in life into faith. Mm, um, right, because I always felt that I made everything happen. My, my motto was I could be more healthy, more wealthy, more worthy, right, more happy. And, mm. But I was willing to work for it. Yeah. And I thought I was in control, but until, until I realized that I was not ever punished. There was a lot of pain, mm. mistakes, failures, and setbacks in my life. I went, lost over a hundred million dollars at one time, and my oh. immediately mindset was, "I'm being punished. What did I do?" Right. And when I started to understand faith, yeah, and I said to myself, "You know what? I'm being protected and promoted at all times. I oh. still have the work ethic. I still have the persistence." But those peas came into my life and, and it came from a simple philosophy. And what I try to do is unite everyone in their faith by saying, I don't care what religion, spirituality or philosophy you mm -hmm. believe in, but I believe, and I want to know what you think about this, mm -hmm. that if you don't believe there's something bigger than you, an omniscient, all powerful, all knowing source, you call it Jesus, Muhammad, yeah. Joseph, I don't care what you call it, but if you don't believe that there is that omniscient source that loves you, more than your mom loves you, or you even love your children, then you will never have the promise. Yeah, I think you, I think you certainly rob yourself of it. And that's, that's the one thing, you know, like, you know, coming to, coming to, and I wasn't raised religious, so like, that's my thing. Um, you and know, I was, that's what's so ironic, right? Yeah, and, and so for me, this was a raw, and I know everybody has all kinds of like spiritual stuff, is like, there's no cookie cutter, right? Yeah. Like, and so people arrive at different conclusions, and I think most people are just afraid to actually engage in some of those difficult conversations. But I think that it's actually, um, you know, like, I don't want to say illogical, because when you consider the, the, the intelligent design of creation, people, the, the, un the controllable and uncontrollable, the principles that are laid into the fabric of creation, it's, it's like, how do you arrive that there's, there's nothing beyond? <laughs> it's just almost like an illogical conclusion. So I'm not the brightest. But I think that when you really just look, observe everything that the human experience tells us about, everything that you observe with your own eyes to not conclude that there's a God, something so far beyond your ability, you know, it's, it's clearly proud, you know, some measure of pride, which we all can, you know, battle and work toward. 
but I was really, I just, man, I'm like, I'm so loved and amazed because I wasn't looking for this. It found me and I'm just trying to be a good steward. of it. That's how I look at life relationships. Um, some things we're intentional about pursuing and some things, you know, we're ensnared by. And, you know, this gift of life, you know, my wife, the helmet catch, these, these gifts from God, I'm really trying to be a steward of and ensure that I give a God a return on his investment. I love that. And our wives are our secrets, as you said, one of the Woo! first thing we met. And I'm, <laughs> I'm blessed. I've known my wife since the fourth grade. She hated me, but I am the first boy to ask her to go study at sixth grade camp. And you she, was macking, She Dave. said no. She said no. <laughs> but when I was 26, she said yes. So nice. Don't worry. Worked. My wife, she turned me down the first time I hollered. <laughs> But, persistence, you know, Dave. Persistence. Listen, persistence. Exactly. I, I had some liquid courage in me to aid me along the nice. journey, but you know, protect me from so some bruises, I. right? So did I. <laughs> the older Dave, not not the sixth no, grade. Dave. No, absolutely. I, I was very hurt and embarrassed. <laughs> um, and our families, to that matter, are so important. So we have absolutely. faith. The second part here is family, mm -hmm. and that's not always easy in the industry that you and I have oh, worked in. Man. And you know, I have lied to myself, and the biggest lie I told myself for a lot of my career was. Uh, family first, then activity I get paid for. Mm -hmm. But the activity I get paid for was for my family. So sometimes that came first and I justified it, <laughs> it right? And then my health came behind there. And then I started realizing if you put your kids in your activity you get paid for, you're never going to really put your health. It was your profession you do, yep. but outside of it. So for me, you know, health was first now, yep. but then family, no mm -hmm. matter what. N none of this excuse that... I'm justifying, oh, I'm going on this trip because I pay for that college or I, I want you to have this. Yeah. I stopped doing that. And I know as someone who you has lived that demand of their activity they get paid for, yep. it's really easy to fall into the trap to justify activity you get paid for as caring about your family. Agreed. How, how have you reconciled that even now? with all the opportunities you have for activity you get paid for? You know, that's a great question. I, you know, and it's honestly one of probably one of those deeper struggles of mine because I, I think I, what, I, what we have, not just in our marriage, but our approach to our life and the way that we're desiring to live in and how we want to shape this is that the, the, the things that are most important to us, we hold them, let's say they're sacred, right? Like um, our faith, our family, our commitment to those things. And holding that true, as you said, um, work for me is part of my responsibility, part of my duty is to serve my family in that way. And that can pull me away from the things that I hold, hold sacred. And I think sometimes we're uncomfortable with, I call it like seasonal sacrifice, right? right? Like, it's like there are times and the, the, the most important thing that, you know, considering my wife, considering the people that are really valuable and that hold me together is being in agreement. Like, you know, and I think I can lead my home, but it's extremely important and valuable that the, the, the things that I hold dear and valuable, that we're in agreement so that when I am making a trip, you know, here, there, there, that we're in agreement and we're, we're all, all hearts and minds are prepared for it. We have seven children. My oldest is 20. My youngest is eight. So we're kind of, we, we're getting our second wind a little bit. Like, right. So, um, but it, these were, like I said, I ain't got no nanny. You know, like I've had, I've, I've, never, I've never made ridiculous decisions, but I, I've had some losses that, you know, and I never made like ridiculous money. So it's, it's one of these things where we were, we're just real people in the grind. Like yeah. I'm the every man, I'm every man's champion. <laughs> every man, every day. And one of the things is it's so interesting because you talk about seasonal, mm -hmm. you know, going the extra mile uh, is not good enough to me. Mm. I, I tell people in the same justification, we go the extra mile for our family once in a while, right? And then what you're doing is you're justifying when people question you if you're not in agreement with the most important people in your life mm -hmm. for me it's my wife and my mom yeah and you know because with their guidance and agreement i can take care of my children much better Powerful. through their wisdom but i'm not i'm not someone I, I live in what's called the empty mile and i see you living in the same mile that i live in and it's really quiet and mm -hmm. not competitive see <laughs> i think that i think the extra mile is super competitive because yep. everybody's going the extra mile every once in a while and then they're justifying it when they do something like oh yeah but i you know my kids will do it to me I, they do something <laughs> wrong and I, and i'll point it out right i like to That's educate right. them and then they'll say but dad i get straight a's mm. right i'm like okay uh, okay. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> and thank you Isn't for that doing what your best. That's going to help you out. Yeah, right. I, I get that. But how does that uh, 
relate back to the fact that you stayed out past midnight and you, you didn't let me know. And I stayed up worried Thank in you. the middle of the night. T- tell me how these, you know, attribute to each other. And that's what people do. They justify. Yes. I use time with my family. So we have the same kind of range of ages. Correct. And I, I literally tell my wife, I promise the agreement, minimum 30 days with you, every, 30 minutes with you every day. So it's FaceTime, in person, whatever. I have a 12 year old son, so he gets 30 minutes. Yeah. Now, my girls, 23, 21, and 18, we negotiated an agreement. <laughs> I want two minutes a day. And mm-hmm. I believe two minutes a day is worth more than two hours on a Saturday. I believe behaviors and relationships compound daily the same as if you take care of your money. Fantastic. It, it's different, right? And I uh, think that agreement has helped me. Do you have any types of agreements with your children or your wife that are u- unique that you think have helped you? You know, I don't have any agreements. I think what's really important to me is that I'm present wherever I am. Right. And that's that's a fight, especially in the in this day and age, because you know everything's vying for attention, right? And my whole life has been about being present, and 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 so that's when people get the best of me. I don't want to be removed from a situation. So if I'm at home, I really want to be present when I'm home. If I'm engage with one of my children. I really want to be available for them. And I, I don't do it perfectly all the time. And I think it's having, you know, considering what, I guess, I don't want to say what it is, what the goal is in relation to fostering the relationship. And the way you talked about the agreements, it's like seeds. Every time that you're able to, every moment that you're able to give, you're planting and watering and developing um, a relationship that's going to blossom. And I think that's been my my most direct um, strategy is just really being present so that they can sense that I'm available for them whenever I am right there for them. And I love the shared humility and the fact that all these are things about practice and progress. There's no perfection in it. Oh, and and as, a, as a dad, I, I, I get that. I tell my kids that all the time. Hey, I'm doing my best. But I do think simply, don't you see so many people, you know, of our age in, in, in responsibility that we have that when they're in an activity, so, for example, I'm in an activity I get paid for. All they're thinking about is, oh, I should be doing this activity that I'm not paid for. And then when they're doing the activity they're with their family, all they're thinking about, and this idea of uh, being present, I think, is really knowing. And this is where faith also comes in. Oh, my goodness. Your priorities. It, there you go. Because if you know your priorities, it's so easy to be present. There's no procrastinating when you yep. know your priorities. There's no feeling overwhelmed. Correct. You're allowed to be present because you've made a conscious decision saying, this is what's important to me now. There you go. And so that prioritization, is there something that you learned on or off the field that helped you to determine your priorities? You know, I, I, the beautiful thing to me about growing in my faith and understanding, I think God, God, God helps me to establish priorities. Um, you know, it's just something simple as, you know, my role, right? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those, if you want to call it a traditionalist, where I think roles are very helpful. Um, I think men have certain hard wirings. Right? There's some hard wiring in humans to protect, provide dynamic. And I'm hardwired to do that. I don't feel whole if I, if I can get the sense or there's the grip that my family's unprotected or not as well cared for. So a lot of my energy will be shifted in that in that space and area. So whether it's business, whether it's physical protection, whether it's emotional protection, um, I'm, sh- I'm shifting a lot of my energy to ensure that I'm being responsible because I have a saying like, you know, work, I'm, I have work, I'm passionate about work because for me, work is worship. It's like, I don't have to separate. It's not a taboo term for me is I can offer that and, and know that not just God is pleased, but the people I'm serving. And even in my limitations, knowing that I'm giving my best effort and I can live with that, 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 that vacuum of space of, man, I got to trust that this is going to work out well if I didn't give the deposit maybe that was needed. I got seven kids. <laughs> how, do, how do you get around the tending all those relationships knowing that I'm still providing for them and having laid up you know, millions of dollars to just, hey, you know what? I can be home and available for you for two weeks. So it, it's just not that. That's not my reality. And but we're whole, we're, we're whole, and, and it's, it's, it's a really warm feeling. I love that. Now, lastly, you also have an incredible show, a sports betting show, 
Uh, no, not sports betting. It's, uh, right, right. Sorry, yeah, because right. <laughs> they have sports betting show, but it's well, we odds actually, with ends. There, that is okay. I right. apologize. Yeah. yeah, with with MSG, absolutely with MSG, and uh, but it's to the context of what I believe. I mean, number one, when we grew up, if somebody would tell told you, hey, someday you'll be able to gamble on everything, and the, and you'll see the signs <laughs> at the stadium, right? Because all we knew was Shoeless Joe and, and Pete Rose, right? <laughs> and if somebody told me, why in every baseball stadium is all I see is gambling around? Like, and they can gamble from the stadiums now. It, it's it, incredible. But what is the, the messaging and purpose for the MSG show? Yeah, Odds With Ends was, was a tremendous concept that was created, obviously, by MSG. Um, it, it started... Um, it actually started with Justin Tuck, who wasn't able to fulfill it. But um, you know, Matthias Kiwanuk and I, we're co-hosts. Uh, we have- Easy for you to say. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like uh, Bia Jamila, my boy. I'm like, dude, I can never say your name. I'm no, sorry. yeah, it's fantastic. Kristen Okoye, God. He's no, here. it's awesome. And really, the whole idea is that we're giving our perspective. We're leading the way and shaping the ideas. Because, you know, like, you know, I learned very quickly that you know, sports betting is all analytics. It's, it's really wild. It's like as much as, as betting is like the most absurd thing to do analytically, <laughs> it's all analytics. And people are looking at weather. They're looking at day. So, but that part is at the end of the day, there's a real genuine knowledge and understanding of the game that you want to add that perspective. And it's really, that's the, that's the fun part is acknowledging all these different viewpoints that we bring into the game of football itself, even when you're preparing for a game, but ultimately, it's like, nah, man, like, here, here's, here's the reason why I know this team is going to win. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes, right? <laughs> Let's just simplify this thing a little bit. And, and that's been the, the fun journey of this wild, wild west uh, uh, opening up of sports betting throughout the country. And it's been, it, was, it was a blast this first season. We're looking forward to, to, to another one. Yeah, it's a really good show, and I love the insights. And there's very few people out there that have what I think is that Romo insight. Yeah. You know, because – Look, when I get on a show, I'm on a Win Daily show with XM, right? And I'm Coach's Corner. So what makes what I say unique is I'm just talking from the perspective of being an old sports agent yeah. and things that maybe other people haven't witnessed. Mm. What you have is that same insight. Absolutely. Instead of a lot of the more sporting or sporting betting odds are those, you know, just same old, you know, yeah. weather. Yeah. It's 72 degrees, but they can't <laughs> tell you – that oh did you know this guy has asthma there and you. because it's not he's not overheating that's absolutely right? he's gonna have a watch him he's gonna have a great game today absolutely or his team plays cover three inside leverage you know AJ Brown is, is is impossible to cover on vertical routes here's why I like him to go over seventy and it's it, it's it's a fun angle and I think that's that's the coolest part of sports of of where we're at in this climate is um, to be able to add those kind of value points. And really not just have the conversation around, it's, it's just sports. Yeah. It's just sports. And people are going to put their money down. I, you know, Always have. Uh, Marco, exactly. Yeah. You know, Not when they just get taxed on it. There, so you, really... go. there <laughs> you go. Especially in New York. Yeah, man. So, yeah, we, ha we had a blast. We're looking forward to uh, continue to you know, produce more, more fun content. Well, I, this is some fun content for me, having you in the studio here at Blue Wire at the Win. Appreciate well, it. You have a heart, a soul, man, that just – went beyond what I even anticipated. I just want to congratulate you, wish you so well. The incredible David Tyree.